So uh, first and foremost, I think we're being filmed now. You guys want to wave? Hi. Hi, everybody at home. Hello. <laughs> Uh, behind you, you can't see them, but there is a ravenous crowd of WizKids fans. So, a uh, ravenous crowd of WizKids fans, do you want to let them know you're here? <laughs> this is good. I've got a little like tingle in my fingers now. <laughs> uh, so, on the stage, we'll, we'll go through some introductions. I'll tell you who everybody is. Uh, as I was saying earlier, we'll go through a bunch of different game stuff. We'll make sure there's time at the end uh, where we can dig into specific topics. And if you want to talk RPGs, I can, at the end, uh, do my best. I'm, I'm the VP of games at the company. I'll do the, the full rigmarole introduction here in a second. But I can set you up with uh, RPG people that know it inside and out uh, on, on that side of the, the business. Uh, joining me at the table is John Schreiner, who works on the product team, predominantly on Heroflix. Uh, any sculpt that's passing through uh, is gonna touch John and John's team and a talented team of sculptors. I think there's uh, 30 to 50 of them across the world now that work on a Heroflix set, RPG sets as well. Uh, and then to his left is a, a new face on the panel for folks that have been here before, but not a new face if you're playing at events around the country and hopefully soon around the world. We'll, we'll get to check Ryan's passport situation. Oh, it's, it's good. good to go. Yeah. <laughs> 2030, send me to Europe. All right. Right. No felonies? Or, no, no. no. Let's, let's go. Not yet. Uh, no shot. So uh, Ryan joined us uh, six months ago? Almost exactly. Yep, uh, in the capacity of an organized play manager. And in the spirit of listening to feedback and putting it into play, you know, last year there was a drumbeat of uh, the, the need and desire to want to have more events and more in-store play, more convention play, more competitive play, more storyline-based play. And you know, we were eager to do that as well. You know, the company went uh, strongly in one direction prior to 2020 with packed events, packed houses, packed conventions. The last four years, as most of us uh, I'm sure have experienced, were, were kind of strange uh, and strange for the game industry, strange for the convention industry. So the company really focused on product and building the, the business out in those years and didn't have that core focus on organized play. Now uh, we're swinging the pendulum back uh, heavily in the other way and it's our goal to start ramping up. And ho hopefully it, it's become apparent, you know, at least anecdotally, week by week about Ryan's uh, you know, announcing different store-based events, different conventions that we're at, uh, returning to Origins. Did anybody here attend Origins? Yes, it was awesome. Yeah. We want to go back next year even yes. bigger? Yes, yes. yes. Let's do it. Uh, Adepticon, anybody here attend Adepticon? Yeah. yeah. Woo. People excited to go to Milwaukee next year for Adepticon? Yeah! yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> we'll, so much. we'll be there. Go Milwaukee. Yeah. Uh, what other places should we go? Texas. Texas? Okay. Awesome. awesome. Megacon. Yep. Megacon. Okay. Philly. Facts. Yep. Yep. Uh, w w which packs? All of them. All of them. <laughs> okay. Denver. Denver? Okay. San Diego Comic Con. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I mean, th these are all good suggestions, and uh, not the first that we've heard, but as we're scaling out, you know, the, the more and more we're looking to find great local partners, great retailers, great event organizers. So. Uh, if you're excited about helping run events, uh, run tournaments, run demos, um, you know, please let us know, let Ryan know. He's going to be that singular funnel for great event organization and information. <laughs> so, okay. These are all the things you can see in the booth. Uh, it's booth 711, which you'll never forget. So, a good one. Yeah. Uh, we, we just kind of lucked into that, but it's been pretty great. Yep. Uh, Gamelings is a brand new thing. It literally launched yesterday. Uh, Gamelings are a collectible that uh, we're creating. And the thought was we get to work with a lot of different cool licensed intellectual properties. We get to work with a lot of uh, our own public domain properties and do cool things with them. And I think all of us have looked at some pretty Spartan board game setups and said, uh, wouldn't it be cool if I could put character XYZ into this game? Or how could I upgrade this game? Or how could I take board gaming pieces and have a cool collectible that can live on your monitor, on your bookshelf, or be a cool gift? Uh, 
the initial launch lineup for Gamelings includes D&D, uh, WotC, and uh, Wizards of the Coast and Dungeons and Dragons have been great partners for us. And we're excited to make our way through the Monster Manual and do all sorts of cool little wooden minis that are giftable or you know you can remove the thimble from the game that you were playing and insert the gelatinous cube. Uh, in addition to those, uh, we have the Red Dragon. Uh, all of these are available uh, in the booth while supplies last, um, and we try to offer them at an affordable, snackable price point where people can come in, try it out, see if they like it, see how it mixes and matches uh, with, with their collection. And don't feel shy, John and Ryan, as we go. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. At some point, people will grow My tired of listening later. to me, but I'll sell, <laughs> like, and the people in the back start looking at their phones. But uh, Tales of the Arthurian Knights. There's no phone hooker yet, is there? No. <laughs> uh, Tales of the Arthurian Knights is built off of an award-winning game system that was launched years ago, Tales of the Arabian Nights. It essentially follows a storyline model in the game where the players are taking the roles of knights that go on grand uh, adventures and grand quests. It's uh, available to demo in the booth, booth 7-Eleven. Uh, it is a super fun, rich storytelling cooperative game that has a little bit of competition to it too. Uh, Star Trek Captain's Chair. Has anybody done the Star Trek Captain's Chair demo or pre-ordered it? Yeah. So yeah, any uh, any big Trek fans here? Who, who bought Trek clips too? Just out of curiosity. And this is only for my edification, this doesn't have anything to do with product. DS9, please. DS9? Yeah. What else? If we do Iconics for Star Trek, what do you want to see? DS9. DS9? Yeah. We can do two things. <laughs> Lower decks would be really cool. Lower decks would be really cool. Okay. All right. You're writing this down? Excellent. Okay. Uh, who knows? Just in case. The, the Star Trek team has been really great to work with. You know, we have a great relationship with them from doing Hero Clicks before, doing uh, Attack Wing, do, doing a variety of different games um, in the board gaming front. Captain's Chair, we're partnering with two great game designers, uh, David Turksey and Nigel Buckle. Uh, I think they have two top 100 games on Board Game Geek right now. So we had the opportunity to reach out and talk with them and say, what do you want to do? Uh, and they said, let's make a Star Trek game. And we said, fabulous, that sounds great. And then uh, because it was a pure passion project, I think David turksey has got like 27 years of expansions ready to go for this. So uh, we're, we'll have to fight, fight back his enthusiasm on it. But he uh, flew in from the Netherlands and is in our booth and you can play the game with the guy that, that co-created it, which is a super cool thing that I'd encourage people to do. It's a great, really crunchy strategic game. Uh, Super Skill Pinball. Uh, raise your hand if you played Super Skill Pinball. All right, keep your hands up. Ryan, you want to deploy Super Skill Pinball to so the people that have their hands up? Yes. I'm putting you on the spot. The box might not even be open. Oh, this is definitely not. It's got my letter open. Is this one, Vic? Yeah, six. Okay. Yep. This is the calamity that I'll introduce Dude. through the presentation as we go. Oh, hey, that's a problem. There you go. All right. He's always got Does anyone else have weapons? The blades <laughs> lost me. <laughs> uh, don't tell me if you have weapons. Um, <laughs> super skill pinball. Sorry, I'll go back. Oh, just just to, to say a bit about it, and good job keeping your hands up. Uh, Thank you. Super skill pinball. Uh, We've done a number of different expansions for it, and it's something that can be playable standalone. Uh, it's a kind of a roll and write game with a twist. Uh, this is also available for demo in the booth or purchase in the booth. It can commingle with, with other uh, copies of the game that you have. Um, and you know, if you have uh, Harley Quinn or uh, DC fan, you know, which I'm sure most of you know, uh, great, great gift. Uh, Trail Story America is going to sell out. Uh, it might sell out by early tomorrow. It's so going really fast. Yeah. We, we had high expectations for it. Uh, it is a storytelling game where essentially you're making your way uh, through uh, different environments, so starting out with the Americas in the, the first game that we're launching here. Uh, it's super cool. I mean, it has like a just a touch of like the supernatural to it, which I think people find surprising, and it seems like it's really resonated with people, where uh, kind of the uh, uh, fun of exploring the wilderness, but then also discovery, and then also a little bit of spooky discovery. 
We have any uh, deck building game players out there? Yeah. All right, everybody simultaneously yell out what deck building game you like. I didn't catch that. <laughs> Heard a lot of DC. Yep. Uh, how about uh, Android Netrunner? Any Android Netrunner fans? Some? Yeah. Uh, Damon Stone, who worked on Android Netrunner, uh, is the designer of DC Forever. Uh, uh, I should say he's the developer and uh, design using the system built by, by other folks previous to him. But I think is also a claim for the work that he did working on Android Netrunner. Uh, DC Forever is a really, really cool deck building game that I think if you like uh, Netrunner or if you like different uh, comic book IP deck builders, uh, it's going to be sensational too. We're hoping uh, it'll be both commercial and critical darling because it's a really cool slick game. Uh, Onslaught. So we had some people early uh, saw, yes, okay, Onslaught fans. D&D uh, &D Onslaught, we announced almost two years ago and then had uh, Onslaught Minis Game Weekend last year for the first time, OMG Weekend. Uh, and I've been rolling that out. The cool thing about Onslaught is if you have D&D minis, it allows you to activate them and incorporate them in the game. Uh, when we launched that game, it was a game that had uh, a long development time in the oven. Sometimes things in the oven for a long time end up delicious. Uh, I think during that time that it had in the oven as we were working on it, you know, the, the world changed it is, uh, in terms of consumer demands, what people were wanting. When we launched the game, uh, and it's still in market, still in stores, is the Onslaught 4 set, which is a great game. It has a, a black dragon in it. It has a cool uh, PvP versus monsters gameplay to it. And those monsters are incredible, too. The sculpts, I've got them all over my house. They're fantastic. Mm -hmm. uh, a consistent piece of feedback we heard was, I wish this was cheaper and an easier entry point to get into the game. Uh, we listened to that and came up with a $99 starter product to get people in at a reduced price point. The D&D uh, &D Onslaught starter set in it uh, is commingleable with any of the other D&D &D Onslaught products that people have purchased up to this point. It expands that out, gives the player more options, and then also has uh, options for a faster playtime if you want that too. So you can still play five characters versus five characters versus monsters, or you could play three characters versus three characters versus monsters if you want uh, a bit quicker game, or if you only have a narrow window to play in the shop. Um, modular maps are a thing that we're working on with that as well, so we're hopeful to build out that Onslaught universe and take people from dungeons to taverns to forests and uh, all the fun places that adventurers want to go. The scenario kit that'll be following it is the Great Giant Games. Uh, the scenario kits uh, have been hot, our hottest sellers on the Onslaught line. The first one, the Benefactor Kit, uh, allows people to play scenarios with the Beholder Mini in-game. And who doesn't love a Beholder? You know, that's our uh, hottest selling RPG Mini that we have uh, in the line. So we, we typically start with the Beholder. We're starting Hero Clicks D&D with, with the Beholder. Yeah. If you're good later, we're gonna pass around the D&D Beholder and you can take a look at them. Ooh. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> that's, a, that's a good crowd. Yeah. I like that. Uh, I had one more note on oh, that, John, oh, sorry. Oh, I will go fast. Sorry. The, the, this scenario kit activates your giants that you have. The innovation on this kit is no minis required. There's 2D uh, uh, chipboard pieces that you can use that can replace the minis in that game if you want to. Then you can upgrade it with minis from your collection or from the retailer's back wall or uh, wherever you like. Uh, Star Trek Into the Unknown, uh, so we, we saw the Star Trek fans earlier. Star Trek Into the Unknown is our next big platform game that we're working on. Uh, they're in the event hall area uh, next to all the, the WizKids events or within all the, the WizKids events. You can see Star Trek Into the Unknown and what I would encourage people to do is either in our booth or in the event hall, take a look at the ships. Uh, pick up the ships, spin them around. Uh, there's a detachable saucer on the Enterprise, uh, the ship detail, the Deco, the Tampo is all awesome. Um, in terms of 
really cool uh, high-end chips and then a high-end cool crunchy game that goes along with it. Uh, I think it's really spectacular. The amount of game that you're going to get out of, of this, uh, I think, is going to be surprising people too. Where I think it's going to be a narrative uh, journey that'll take you, you know, potentially two or three months with, with a group of other players going along with it. Uh, we tried to make this as Star Trek centric as we could, meaning you know it's just not a uh, an attacking game, a combat game. It has diplomacy, exploration, problem solving. And then also, you know, the torpedoes. <laughs> How big are we going to go? How big do you want to go? <laughs> you guys going to chant DS9 again? A lot of Yeah. I think that, well, Calder turned the camera off. <laughs> <laughs> <I'm kidding. laughs> I would love to do a board. You, yeah. I'm never going to say no to the board. But, you yeah. can't. <laughs> it's good to joke. This is a good one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's time for... Your guys' jobs might be in trouble. Oh, uh, well. The crowd well is I'm not worried. The crowd is hot. <laughs> okay. All right. But yeah, uh, if you come by the event, you can come by the booth and check out the game, uh, releasing later this year, or the event hall and, and play it.